Welcome to the Dashboard Effect Podcast. I'm Brick Thompson. I'm Caleb Oaks. Caleb, last uh, episode, we talked a lot about what we saw out in Seattle at the Microsoft Build Conference. And we focused on Fabric and the One Lake and sort of data storage and so on. I thought we could continue today and talk about what they were showing with respect to Power BI and some co-pilots around that. Yeah, some really interesting stuff was announced. Kind of mind-blowing, cool actually. Stuff too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I think you know one of the cool things that we both took a picture of is if through the keynote was, um, I think it's worth mentioning, was that slide. It was like, the well, data is the fuel that powers AI or something exactly. like that. And, um, it's exactly how we've been thinking about it for the past few months around get your data ready. Because that's going to be the that's going to be the thing that's going to allow you to do some of these cool Power BI things we're about to talk about. Yeah, I think that's right. There, uh, there was one particular demo they showed. It was about three minutes, and I'll put a link to a YouTube uh, video of this demo that showed how you can use Copilots in Power BI once it comes out. It's not there yet to do natural language queries. And not only does it give you good summary prose analysis with the questions you've got, but it'll build you a Power BI report that looks very credible. The, de- the no. demo's mind-blowing. I mean, obviously, they set it up so that it would work really well. Yeah, yeah. happy path, right? <laughs> right? Right, right. So it, it raises some questions, I think. When I, when I look at that, I say, okay, so if this works as well as it looks like it will, do you even need people to build reports? Do you need visualization people anymore? And then the second question I have is, what do you really need behind the scenes? What does your infrastructure need to look like? What modeling has to be done? What other work has to be done so that this stuff will work as well as we saw in the demo? Yeah. Yeah. I think those are a lot of really good questions. Um, and I don't think anybody quite has the answers unless you've been working on the co-pilot as part of Microsoft. But, <laughs> um, you know, we'll, we'll give our opinions on what we think it is. And, um, you know, obviously educated. We've been using these AI tools, you more than me, for a lot over the past Whatever, eight you know, months, eight months, months. Yeah, yeah, for a while. That, so. Really, really a lot for the last sort of five or six. But we started using them last spring, I think, to help with marketing efforts. Yeah, yeah. And I think there was also – we also attended a few sessions at the Build Conference that did just talk about AI in general and these large language models and kind of how they work. So, you know, pretty educated assumptions on what you're going to need to do to make this work based on the nature of these AI models and, and what they need to give you good results. So – yeah. Uh, yeah. So, all right. So here's some of our guesses. So uh, it's possible at some point in the future you'll be able to point an AI and LLM just at raw data without defined relationships, without named columns. And it will know enough about the world and the systems out in the world and how they relate to be able to just do all of that work to connect things and, and do smart things. But I think it's going to be a while. Yeah. I think for now – you're going to pull your data into the one lake, but then you're going to need that semantic layer. You're going to need the data warehouse portion or the lake house, the house portion, where you've actually modeled it. Mm-hmm. And you've taken, you know, sometimes we have source systems that give us column names that are two letters followed by eight digits. And that would be, you know, invoice total or something, but it doesn't say invoice total. So you have to do some translating there into this semantic layer, the the house portion, um, and then make connections so Mm -hmm. that, you know, you can do the types of queries you want to do when you're looking at a customer um, in a sales table. You've got a customer ID. Okay, well, what if I want the customer name? Well, you have to have that relationship to the customer table to get that customer name. Right, right. And additionally, what if it's sold to or built to customer, right? You need to, like, define some of those (laughs) things. And to your point, I think probably down the road, who knows at what point, but they'll probably be automatic. But until then, you know, if you want to make use of this, which it is, you know, it's pretty powerful stuff to be able to see. You know, you ought to watch that video, but yeah. you can see, you know, how powerful it is just if you just want to ask a question of your data. And I think you're going to have to do those things and get your data into a spot where an LLM can understand it um, or you're able to generate a good prompt for an LLM to be able to to pull something back. So um, it's really important. 
Yeah. You know, we've been saying, I think for a few months, we've been talking about how important it is to get your data infrastructure in place, especially if you're a mid-market company. Our typical customers at Blue Margin are sort of $100 million to a billion, something like that. Um, you know, you want to be able to integrate and then consolidate your data so you can get reporting across um, your, your platform company and the add-ons. Typically, PE-owned companies are doing a buy and build where they're buying a lot of companies. Um, but this gives even more impetus mm -hmm. to do that because I think companies that have their data infrastructure in place and organized when this stuff goes GA are going to have a head start over companies that aren't doing it. They're going to be ready to start using these things and empowering mm -hmm. their executives to literally, I, I'm, I'm guessing they're going to do it through your phone even. Sure. You know, your yeah. sales guys will be able to pick up their phone and say, uh, which of my customers have birthdays this week? Um, you know, how many dollars do I need to sell before the end of the month to hit my quota? And it's just right. going to spit that stuff out. Right, right. Um, and then if they want to get a report, they can just have it build a report as well. Exactly, right. And I think that's going to be such a big value add for some of these things because, I mean, how many times do you go through – just your day and you're thinking, you know, all right, I have this question. Now you have to remember which report does that live in? And even if it's in a really nice Power BI report, you still got to remember like where to go. You got to spend the time going there and getting it rather than just picking up your phone and saying, right. Asking the question, like just unbelievable. Well, uh, we had, cool. we had a, a thing this week, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty technical executive. I'm not as good at SQL and, and that stuff as you. I had a question. I knew where the data was in our data warehouse. Um, I knew what the source was. I know the table's there. But I was going to have to figure out sort of complex SQL query. Not complex for you, but for me. And so instead, luckily, I know you, so I went and asked you to do it for me. But that's going to go away with mm -hmm. this. I would have just been able to ask it natural language what I was looking for. Yeah, yeah. But it's important to say it's not going to go away just if you're just complacent. Right. Like you have to do some stuff to enable this thing to be able to get, that, get you there. But you're right. It is... If you've got your data in a good spot and you've got some good models built on top of it, then yeah, it will, yeah. Go, it will go away for you good models, sooner rather than later. Data dictionary, there may be things to do around synonyms. You know, in the old, um, in Power BI for years, you've actually been able to do some natural language querying, but you really had to set it up so that you've thought of the synonyms people might use for the different things they're looking for. And we've all seen, if you've been playing with ChatGPT, it's quite good at figuring out what mm -hmm. you're talking about. Yeah. So there'll be less need for that, but there still will be the need for creating that um, that reporting model with the relationships and that type of thing. Yeah, exactly. Right. So let's shift to the Power BI portion, because one, one part of this three-minute video, which I hope all our listeners will look at, um, when they asked the question, it was sort of a complex question with some bullet points of what they were looking for. It produced a beautiful Power BI report. I mean, That's really crazy. top rate. Mm -hmm. And then showed how easy it is to go in and change visualizations and, and adjust it. I mean, just sort of drag and drop and point and click and super easy. Um, also, to, to you, know, you can tell it just in natural language, again, make this look like our standard reports and it rebrands it. And, yeah, it's and pretty cool. Take this line chart in the lower right-hand corner and instead put a text summary in there. And just did an amazing job of all those things. So it might beg the question of, okay, so do I not need visualization experts going forward? Mm -hmm. I have a view on this, but what's yours? I think you're still going to need them. You know, I think you're going to need to know to change the lower right hand bar chart to a text summary. Like you're gonna want people that are good at that. Otherwise, there's no reason why you can't, you wouldn't just prompt away the co-pilot to build you a crappy report, right? right. <laughs> so there's still that. I mean, it gives you a nice way to, to start and maybe if that's all the further you take it, but you know, it can obviously be improved because you know, even in the demo, they were like, yes. "Oh yeah, let's just improve this a little bit right. from what it originally spit out." Well, and we know from building reports for hundreds of companies, thousands of reports, that um, there's a big difference between just getting a report built and having a report that meets the business goals in a very efficient way. Yeah. I talked to uh, an executive at one of our customers this morning, and she said one of the big values that we bring as a as an expert in visualization is to really make the reports crisp. She said, our executives will come to you guys and have all kinds of ideas of things they want to cram on a single page. And she said, you're great at saying, okay, let me think about that. Let me understand the goals and then come back with a really simple report that gets all of the things they were looking for that's super easy to use and attach mm -hmm. to. So I think it 
uh, will likely drive the value of good visualization expertise up because good visualization engineers will be able to produce a lot more work in a lot shorter time because kind of the initial grunt work will happen with the AI and then they'll do that really fine dialing in. So where they maybe would have spent a week getting a report just right before, they could maybe do one in a day or two depending on the turnaround with the stakeholders. It kind of maximizes more of the soft skills that you need for building good reports versus just knowing how to write good DACs or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. I also think uh, good data visualization engineers are generally good data modelers. They know what they need in their in their reporting data model. And so more of their effort may go towards getting that really dialed in so that users can use natural language queries mm-hmm. to get the results that they want. Right. So, you know, we're all wondering uh, when we're going to be replaced by AIs. Who, who knows? <laughs> I read a story about a CEO at a games company that got replaced by a AI CEO and the AI CEO is doing better <laughs> than the guy was. So, yeah, so you never know. But I think it's going to be a while before we don't need engineers to really get this stuff dialed in. Yeah, right. Right. And it's very possible. Yeah. And and I think the, the lesson that I came away with, well, actually, it wasn't a lesson. It was just a confirmation of what you and I have been discussing in here and and out of, out of the studio Um it's going to be even more important than ever to actually have your data all integrated and consolidated into a data lake so that you can take advantage of these tools. We all know that companies who are data-driven and have a good handle on their data tend to perform better. They're valued higher in the market. Um, this gives even more reason to do it. Mm-hmm. And it makes me think that it's it, – you. If I were an executive at one of these companies, I wouldn't be thinking, okay, so I've got six months maybe till GA, then I'll start working on that. I'd be thinking, okay, what can I get done over the next six months so that when Microsoft flips that switch, we can just start taking advantage of it right then? Right, exactly. I mean, this stuff's coming so fast. It, I know. it was just the end of last year that really chat GPT-3 came out yeah. and generated a bunch of excitement. And look how far it's come already. Like now we're talking about – it building Power BI reports for you? Like it hasn't even been a year. It's crazy. So it is crazy. Like it's yeah. going to keep moving pretty quick. And I think you're right. Like, don't wait for it. Like, start doing stuff now. Yeah. 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 Get ahead of it. All right. Well, I think that was what I wanted to cover on this topic. Any, any parting shots here? All good. All right. Talk All to right. you soon. Thanks.